Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. This is the podcast, the political podcast that's dedicated to hearing out both sides and seeing if we can find any common ground between the two. So tonight, it's uh, we have three of us. So it's Ryan uh, is representing the liberal side, even though he's wearing a red shirt, and me representing the conservative side, even though I'm wearing a blue shirt, and Josh, who's my sidekick, uh, conservative sidekick, who's also in blue, strangely <laughs> enough. Tonight but, I'm a wild card. I'm not in anybody's side. Ooh, you don't know where I'm coming from. Ooh, he's well, coming from every side. I felt like we be we beat Ryan up last time, and I'm like, I was just thinking about like Ryan. You need to bring a, like some friend, a liberal friend, and then we can go two on two, right? Little, uh, um, a second uh, informed liberal. <laughs> there is one. Yeah, you know, the sad part is I'm like thinking. I mean, I have I have some friends, but like they're either really woke or they're like even less progressive than I am. So that'd be right. like really moderate. So it's like this weird balance of like, I don't know if extreme I could get somebody. Versus, yeah. It would be like yeah. pretty extreme, but you know, we a radical talk woke about would balance out point. Josh on that side. Just I, I'm wondering if that's like, I'm sorry for the digression here, but oh, that's actually kind of facing fascinating. Right. Is, is that really the, the battle lines on the left right now where you have just the extreme woke left and then you have basically moderate progressives and nobody in the middle now you, well, well i okay. mean we are going tangent really fast here but <laughs> i actually look at the sign look at the sign somebody read that please play well with liberals <laughs> josh does not play he has a warning label folks he does not play well with liberals uh so tonight we're going to be talking about elon musk and we're going to be talking about his pay package that uh yeah. that just went through or, well, just got approved, and but there's more to it than that. Um, also, we're going to be talking about the Hunter Biden um, gun conviction. charge conviction. Yeah. And um, so, uh, but as a as a tangent, I will say this, uh, Josh. We, I feel like the liberals are having their Trump moment that we that the conservatives had four years ago, where it's there's a fight going on within the party. Yeah. Right. Of like there's wokeism and then versus sort of like your more traditional liberal. And like Bill Meyer talks about this a lot. Like he's like, I feel like the party's leaving me. Yeah, I've heard him say that. Going, and it's going down this train and it didn't, you know, I didn't leave it. It left me. And, yeah, he, he he's not more conservative. The party's right. just moved way farther to the left and he's calling it out for the crazy stuff that's going on. So that's well, and people and 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 people in the party are calling him conservative right and he's yeah. like whoa no uh what what do you think ryan uh i mean i, I don't think that's that... debatable sorry go ahead but well, that's not saying, debatable I... that the party's moved farther to the left i mean if we're using like biden as the head of the party then i don't think that's the case i would say biden is actually a very moderate uh democrat um i think you know the base is pretty far to the left uh, but a lot of the politicians are not as far to the left. I think they're actually pretty close to center. Uh, I just filled out a survey today that was asking my political views for something or uh, or the other. And they asked me to rate myself and then the Democratic Party um, and then Joe Biden, right? Hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm fairly progressive right so i'm definitely left of center i didn't put myself all the way at the extreme but i was like i'm pretty far left of center and then i put joe biden actually like right in the middle and i put the democratic party almost in the middle so just left of center but not radically left of center that that's my read on like the policies that they're doing i mean if you think about it right now uh joe biden is trying to close the border right? That is not a progressive position, like not even remotely a progressive position. He just knows he's getting hammered over this um, and because immigration is an issue. So he's not staking out a radically progressive position of like amnesty for everybody who can make it to the country. That would actually be my position, right? I mean, we talked about this years ago that I'm for open borders. I think that would radically shift a lot of things. That's a very progressive position. Joe Biden's trying to close the border. That's not a progressive position, even remotely. So a lot of the positions that he's staking out, I wouldn't say are actually woke radical leftist positions. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and I do have to add just one last thing. So are you guys both basically conceding that the Republican Party is now the party of Trump? So you're not having this debate anymore? Okay. No. Well, <laughs> there's, there's still a lot of people that don't like him. I don't like him. I, I mean. Come on. He owns the, the party at this point. 
Every I, single politician at the federal level basically bows to that bastard. I 100% agree with you. Yeah. This so I got sorry. I was looking for this. I got to share this meme. Can you get? Let's see. This is oh. uh, it's probably blurred out. Left yeah, so something. I see a big black hump in the middle. It looks like a standard distribution. Yeah, it's so a standard distribution. Blurry. Oh, left, right, and then what is left, the, right, uh, and then far right, and it's like the 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 majority <laughs> of the of the standard distribution, right? And that's where it's like uh, anyone who has like a that, centrist yeah. point of view is now a far right. This is, I've. I've heard a lot of accurate podcasters no. have been called far right because they're like want border control and things like that. And they're like, oh, you're far right. And it's like, well, a lot of these people that are that are called far right conservatives like Jordan Peterson and uh, Joe Rogan and stuff, they're all they've all voted Democrat their whole they're, lives. They're it's crazy on, on social and moral issues. They're on the left. Yeah. Right? But on most of them, not all but, of them. But, but now they them. are labeled as far right wingers. It's yeah, crazy. because they're like anti-trans, or not even they're not even anti-trans. They're like complicating the trans question. Yeah, right? right. So they're not just like all in for trans rights. They're like, right. yeah, hold on, let's ask questions, right? Yeah. And so that's, they shunt that's, it that's off the, to the point right. they're trying they to make is they're like, oh, you're anti-trans, <clears throat> you're 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 far you're far left. Oh, uh, you know, J.K. Rowling, you're you're anti-trans. Yeah, no. Well, you're she's, far right. She's, she's a very liberal. progressive person. Super yeah, liberal, she just yeah. took one particular issue, and I, I don't and agree she's with gotten how crucified that for it. And she has, yeah. But again, I don't think that's the vast majority of the Republican Party. Just like, um, like white supremacist or Christ, white Christian nationalist is not the vast majority of the Republican Party. It's probably a growing percentage. I don't know the actual numbers, right? But it's probably a bigger percentage than is the woke radical left. I don't think they're actually that big of a percentage. Yeah, I really don't. I mean, again, look you at just the people who are actually in, your, in power. All of your friends are either super woke to the left or or right in the middle. Um, they're, they're more woke, right? So th they would be closer to that Great. side. I don't think they're all like right there. So yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's a little complicated. You're All right. about the most moderate liberal that I know. Uh, really? Yeah. This and, I, and I've you know, sorry for the tangent. I know. Tangent. That was a good but, one though. And some I have thought about a lot. But um, our, our sponsor. Bidets. Yeah. Bidets. Yes. Did everyone wash up today? <laughs> uh of course <laughs> i wouldn't i would not come on this podcast unless yeah. i was clean tom you're like i mean, i'm filthy I can't uh, <laughs> i'm washing right now <laughs> uh, <laughs> i wouldn't expect anything josh is podcasting there's a bathroom. reason that the camera is up here and not yeah, down there yeah. hey as, as long as you're framed correctly yeah. i'm okay with that josh i don't care if there's no you're not even wearing pants on the bottom half it's hey he's well, smiling he's smiling <laughs> <laughs> all right five a day let's, they're great yes let's jump into it then so um it will yeah we're gonna start with the elon musk pay package um so this is this has been uh, i he, i've heard a lot of news about this but when i actually got into it it was actually hard to find the details of this pay package i don't know if that's that was really on per i don't know right it just seemed odd that i could I read two or three or four articles and no one got into very specifics other than it was a $56 billion pay package. And that's totally unfair and outrageous. Right. And it's the biggest pay package ever for an yeah. executive. And so there was a lot of what I was, what I'm saying is that I found, I found, I could find lots of outrage and things about it. But uh, when I got into the specific de finding the, the very specific details was difficult. Um, and but I did, and so I'm just going to give you a synopsis here. So this is this is kind of what it was. So 2018, Elon Musk presents this pay package. He says, "Okay, I want you to give me," and it's basically 12 percent of the company that he's going to gain in stock. He's going to gain all this extra stock uh, by um, if he can hit these certain conditions within five years. And so that has been by 2023. He was going to do these. It's uh, basically it's like two things. Is basically what it is. It's kind of three, but um, uh, but essentially, I was kind of going to what the, what these three things were. Um, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So he had to increase the market value and uh, increase the revenue, and essentially, it's like pr it's profit uh, margin. Um, 
And, and, but the revenue was pretty wild. It was, yeah. So he had to get the Tesla's market value to 650 billion, which was 10 times the company's value in 2018, which is your market value, right? Is this is how the, what the stock's valued at, which is debatable, right? Mm -hmm. Now, a couple of things that are, are important to add is he then had to, he has to vest for five years. So you can't, it was in, it was, this is sort of a safeguard to keep from gimmick, doing something gimmicky, right? He's like, oh, look, I got, I was able to, to artificially inflate the market value to, to this, to hit this margin. Uh, and then it's going to crash back down. No. So he's got to hold that for, for five years and then he gets it right. So he, so basically gets it and then he vests for five years and then he can cash out. So, right. and so he can't cash out until, so 2003, uh, sorry, 2023. So he can't cash out until 2028. Um, and so this is the package. So it was approved in 2018. He hit these margins. So he increased the market value, increased the revenue. It was, uh, it was like he had to hit a certain EBITDA, which is like a, a profit percentage or, or hit a certain revenue amount. Um, and he hit those and then, um, and then it was the because the company is uh, registered in Delaware, the judge struck it down. And so right now they've he went back to the shareholders. They have they the biggest news is that they reapproved it, but mm -hmm. it's still they've got to go through some litigation. Uh, I because I believe they re-registered in Arizona or Nevada Texas. or something. No, in Texas. Texas. Tesla's okay. now Texas based. And they um, but it's now... going back to the Delaware judge. Yes. So he still has. So I'm not sure how that's worked. Right. Because does is, does the Delaware judge get the final say or can they do can they reaffirm it in Texas? I don't know. So there's some uh, there's some litigation. Yeah, I think it's going back to the Delaware judge. I don't know if you guys knew who started the lawsuit. So it was actually a Tesla shareholder. Um, he was a, a the drummer for a heavy metal band uh, <laughs> and he owned nine shares of stock. Oh, no. And he actually was like, yeah, I don't support this. I think it's it's excessive. So he actually started the lawsuit, this one Tesla shareholder. Well, band. Because they're, uh, it's not a band you've heard of, right? I mean, I could look some. it up real quick. Yeah, it's just like some weird okay. heavy metal band. But uh, it would be great if it was like Metallica, right? It was like Metallica's drummer. But it was yeah, just like, like some Mars? random. <laughs> wow. Uh, but he only see, had like, I'm interested. Yeah. He has, he only so had he has like, like a thousand dollars or like yeah. twelve fifteen hundred worth of but he was able to bags. he was actually able to pursue it. Um and I, I believe it actually goes back to the Delaware judge, right? So the Delaware, the judge in Delaware uh said it is an excessive pay package. That was the claim. The drummer was like, Hey, if we give him all that money, it basically dilutes our shares and costs mm -hmm. us money. Yes. as shareholders. So that's why I'm suing because it's actually costing me money in effect. And the judge was like, yeah, that is an excessive pay package. I mean, uh, and and the current number, so at its peak, it would have been something like 56 billion. I think it's dropped by about 10 billion. So it's now worth like 46 billion or something like that. But but it's still, I mean, come on. That I don't know if either of you, you know, would would turn down $46 billion. Like that's a, it's a fair amount of money. It's a, it's so. an, it's an, a, an egregiously large amount of money, right? Yes, and it's it one of the largest pay packages but, ever. For sure. But he he hit his target, right? He said I'll increase the value of the company by ten or a hundred percent or whatever it was. Ten tenfold. So ten x it. Tenfold. Okay. Yeah. Ten times. And he hit the target, right? So at the end of the day, yes. this just becomes a matter of greed. He did what he agreed to do. He made everybody more money. Now everybody's looking at his big big payday and going, well, that's not fair. He's taking too much money. He did the job. Like this is this is literally just greed on the part of this stupid drummer and anybody any of the shareholders shareholders that are supporting this. It's just greed. He did what he agreed to do, and he but made no you greed money. On, there's no greed on Elon Musk's part. So what? He did oh, what he agreed to do. One hundred percent greed. Yeah. <laughs> so, There's no greed. Okay. Do you, when you go to work, that, when you go to work at the university, it's pretty greedy for you to to expect a paycheck. Uh, I'm not same following thing. Your logic at all, Josh. So you're basically you, saying you, the shareholders agreed. are greedy, but it's okay for Elon, and that's bad. But it's okay for Elon Musk to be greedy, and that's okay. Yeah, because he set up this. Those are the parameters of the deal. He fulfilled his end of the bargain. Well, and they're and I, now mad about it because he's taking this big payday. He did what he what he said he was going to do. I I would justify it in this way, Josh, that the drummer he's benefiting from 
Elon keeping yeah. his side of the bargain. He made but everybody he's money. Mad that he's going to lose some money, but yet he yeah. gained a bunch of money, right? Yeah. That's why it's in, it's just silly. It's it's literally just greed and envy. How dare he take this much money? He made everybody. He made the drummer money. You can't argue that. And he did what he agreed to do. So now it's just everybody on the outside looking in. It's just envy. That's literally all this is. Yeah, I mean, uh, Elon's I taking a happening. crazy. What else would it be? Because he uh, made everybody money. He he increased the company tenfold. Right. He did what sure. he agreed to do. Pay the man. <laughs> Ryan, so first off, Ryan, what's your take on it? Uh, the beauty of this, I was a Tesla shareholder. Um, I sold, right? So I did make money. Uh, thank you, Tom, for the advice. On uh, that, That's twice that I actually bought Tesla stock, watched it go up, sold at the peak, and then watched it go down. And then I did it again, right? Sold, uh, bought at the bottom, uh, wait for it to go up, and then sold at the peak again. So I don't know. I made a few thousand dollars off of Tesla stock. That's great. But I'm not a shareholder right now. I didn't vote on this, right? Um, had I been a shareholder during this vote, it's not for me, right? And and again, I didn't vote. So like, whatever. This is a Tesla shareholder issue. At the end of the day, like my opinion matters for nothing on this. Um, I think my motivation would have been it's an egregious amount of money, right? If it had been a billion dollars, I would have been like, okay, right? Like the, he 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 does he deserves a billion dollars, right? Um, that's still so much money, like so we we can't even fathom how much money that is. Who are you to decide what an egregious amount of money? I I well, I think me. your pay from the university is an egregious amount of money. I okay, think you should you take say that. half of your pay. Okay. That, Who that are is you to say 100% this? your opinion. That's me. That's just literally so, my opinion. Okay. I'm entitled so, to my opinion. That's you're it. entitled and to your you own wrong opinion. Have voted, you would not have <laughs> voted for it. You would have voted down. I would have voted down. State, I think it's I think it's an egregious pay package. Uh, I mean, who needs $46 billion? Like the guy that's going to that. save free speech in America by buying Twitter? Oh, he, should have, he should have $50 billion. <laughs> he destroyed free speech. He destroyed Twitter. Twitter that's is your own wrong opinion. Yeah. So it's a cesspool now, and it's a fanboy club for Elon Musk. It's a vanity project for him. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so I I would have voted against it, but at the end of the day, like I'm not a Tesla shareholder. If that's what the Tesla shareholders want, fine. Um, I've heard a number of commentaries about this. It's been a lot in the news, and I think um, I liked one of the perspectives on this, which was um, if you were a Tesla shareholder. And uh, the CEO of Tesla was basically juggling like 50 balls, right? Mm -hmm. He's also the CEO of SpaceX. He's mm -hmm. also the CEO of Neuralink. He bought Twitter and spends a lot of time messing with that, even though he now has a CEO over there. He just started an AI company. He's got mm -hmm. all of these other companies. Boring. If you were a Tesla shareholder and you had arguably a brilliant person who was behind the company, wouldn't you want his full attention? Wouldn't you want him to actually be like running the company that he's no. supposed to be running and that you're paying him to run? No. And effectively what they said by giving him this pay package is like, Elon, go ahead and dick around like you are, right? Keep getting high and using all your drugs and sexually harassing all these women and, and increasing the and company by tenfold. Things. I mean, he's he's not like personally running the day-to-day -day operations of every one of these companies. He surrounds himself with smart people. Like you, you but, can't really argue that at Tesla, it's people that want to make a difference, like really good engineers that have already been paid, um, and, it, and they're going there. We're also well, skipping the fact that it's arguably a meme stock now. So I want I want you that. to finish your thought, Ryan. Um, so I I think it's a reasonable point to say um, the shareholders could have said, "Hey, you know what? We think you should be remunerated for what you've done for the company. You're a smart guy. You've done some really cool things." but we want your undivided attention. And as a result, we're not going to give you this, right? We're going to basically chastise you and say, stop doing all this crazy stuff that you're doing on the side. Stop focusing everywhere else. We want you to actually grow Tesla. Uh, Tesla's in an awkward spot right now. I don't know how closely you guys follow the electric car market. Um, it's it's actually pretty interesting. Uh, what was it? Like five or six years ago, Elon Musk was like, we don't need subsidies by the federal government, right? And now 
and he's he just walked this back right but um what is it byd is it byd mm -hmm. BYD. yeah um chinese electric car manufacturer elon musk has admitted he is terrified of them it because when be. they first came out with their cars they were pretty crappy but their latest versions they're giving tesla a run for their money yes. and they're like what two-thirds the price yeah they're way cheaper they're just as good and so he now is like, we need tariffs against the Chinese yeah. manufacturers. That, that's or what we're going to get tariffs, destroyed. Not, not subsidies, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. So, well, yeah. yeah. So that's um, what he walked back. Well, he, yes. So he did say he didn't want the government subsidizing them. Of course, if you pay attention to the Tesla marketing emails, right? So I get them because I'm a Tesla owner. Uh, every time I get one of those emails, they give me the price of a Tesla factoring in how much you would get off yes. based on taxes With, right yeah mm -hmm. right With so the they're getting credit. subsidies they're totally using that to their advantage right that because the federal government subsidizes those now he wants the tariffs because he knows he can't compete with byd mm -hmm. tesla's in a really bad spot right their share price the the share price has actually gone down um they're not as profitable their profit margins have had to shrink pretty substantially to try and sell the cars they just redid the model three uh, it's got a brand new overhaul. Um, it's getting really good reviews, but you know that's great because as soon as BYD is able to enter the market, assuming they are, which Biden actually did Elon Musk's bidding, right? A hundred percent tariff on all electric cars coming from China. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so, that's a whole bigger political issue that like okay. we You've should been totally have for a conversation a long time. about it. So the right, argument I'll you stop. just made was. Elon Musk is doing his job and taking care of Tesla. Good argument. I agree. <laughs> Here, you just said <laughs> logic is all over the place no, tonight. No, you Josh. just I'm not said following it. you at all. Elon just come on, make some logical just, arguments for me. You just my... made the argument against yourself. Elon just pushed Biden into putting on tariffs to protect Tesla. Sounds like he's doing his job. Yeah, like you know, that's the my... argument you just made. Yeah. yeah. My, my take actually is that Biden's doing it more for the because here's the thing. It's the other automakers that are in deeper Probably. trouble that are going to get. Was it Chrysler so, that just announced they're way reducing their EV production for the no, next all year? Of are, yeah. well, all of them are. Yeah, all of them are. One of one of them was just like yesterday or two days ago. Yeah, I'm not even one, talking but... about their EVs. I'm talking about their regular cars, right? Yep. This The BYD cars are so cheap. Um, it's just going to eat market share. And uh, their bottom end car is about twelve thousand dollars USD. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Twelve thousand dollars for a fully electric car. Now it's not, you know, even a Model yeah. Three level, Sheesh. but it's twelve grand for a fully electric car yeah, that's a decent car. You the, can't buy. No, cars are so expensive now. That's of, crazy. Good yeah, automaker. of all the automakers, I would say, and I'm just talking. I'm not talking about EV automakers. I'm talking about automakers. Tesla is probably the best prepared to deal with BYD because they have such large profit margin on the cars margins yeah. and but um that means they can go lower right they can compete they can lower the cost if they need to to, to increase mar demand like the other model makers they're gonna get their their butts handed to them so <laughs> yes so the tariff actually i think is is more a favor for the entire auto industry than just for elon but that's that's my take what um, was your take on on the deal, Tom. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. So my started. here's my take. This is this is what I think is interesting. He's. I mean, because I'm I'm kind of agreeing with you, Josh. But like, it's it's the. But here, there's a couple of the points that someone brought up. Uh, I thought were so good, and that was like, one, he's throwing out this deal, and so he's so he. You got to think about this. He's going. He's has to 10x the market share, right? So that means if you had a thousand dollars, if he hit his goal, you would have. Ten thousand dollars, right? It's crazy. And then you're going to create twelve percent dilution of the. So you're going to lose twelve percent of your of your shares are going to be diluted from this recreation of stock. So you're going to get basically like eighty eight percent upside on this thing, right? That's a good investment. And if he doesn't make it, he gets nothing, zero, zero compensation. You have to. Here's where he is the richest man on the planet. Just, just to be clear. So yeah. he is the but richest he, person on the planet. But he basically just wasted five years, right? He didn't, he's not going to get any compensation for it. And this is the crazy thing. What this is where it blows my mind is he's, he's been villainized quite a bit about this for being greedy and his egregious amounts and this and that. But then you take the flip side and we have all of these CEOs 
with the call the golden parachute, right? Mm -hmm. I will run the company into the ground. Oh, and on my way out, I'm going to take a multi million dollar pay package, right? I think and that's problematic too. Yeah. It's a huge, I mean, and everyone's like, wow, that really sucks. And then, then they turn around and they're like, but Elon Musk, right? Yeah. And I'm like, this makes zero sense that like this guy is 100% performative pay packet, 100%. Not like, oh, well, and if I screw this up or if I get halfway, I get half the package or whatever is one all or nothing. And we're villainizing him for that. But then we turn around and we're like, Oh yeah, we really hate those golden parachute packages. And you're like, I, I mean, I absolutely hate the golden parachutes, right? Yeah. And it's like, like it, everybody it, agrees on that. I, yeah, yeah, I think well, everyone agrees. But then we turn the around words, and we're villainizing. I think we all agree. <laughs> perform we found common we're... ground. We found common ground. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we hate those. And I don't, I don't think there's anyone that doesn't hate those. But the CEOs but like, who get them, I'm sure they love them. Yeah, except the CEOs, <laughs> right? Exactly. But um. But like we, I think every pay package should be performative based, right? Like that's the way it should be for CEOs. And like, but we're like, I guess it's the amount that people, it's giving people such heartburn, but I, I think it's crazy that we're so, that this is such a foreign weird thing and that we're so, it's gotten so much negative media attention. So that's, that's my take. <clears throat> Can I can I add two things just to complicate this because I love that complicating things. Uh, yeah. So one is the board of directors that approved this pay package included his brother yes. and a bunch of friends and people who he handpicked, right? So that's obviously become an issue, and I'd like to get your take on that. Of if he's basically handpicking a bunch of people to be on his board of directors, right? Yeah. And then they turn around and give him this sweetheart deal. That seems like a bit of a conflict of interest for a board of trustees. How? They're really not. Oh, let me finish. They're really not acting in the best interest of the shareholders if they're basically doing that, right? So that's point one. And then the second okay, one. But let's address point one, and then we'll come back. Okay, that's fine. So How is it a your sweetheart deal if he increases the value of the company by ten x, and it's only performative based and he doesn't have a parachute golden parachute package if he screws it all up how is that a sweetheart deal i'll make that deal you come into my company right now and if you promise you're going to increase my revenue by tenfold i'll give you a great I'll, and and there's You'll no give caveats. me 12 percent of the company I'll, on yeah, top give, of whatever he already owns sure like I'll give you whatever you want if you're going to increase my revenue by tenfold. That's what he it's did. It's not his revenue. It's the, it's the the value cap. of the company. Okay, market right. cap. Yeah. Yeah. you could sell Still, your shares because the, the revenue can't, is actually not. So you can't say that's a sweetheart right. deal. Okay, I mean politicians make sweetheart deals, it. but it's not <laughs> accurate. It's not accurate, and you know it's not accurate because if you came in, if you came in as an investor in my company right now and said, "I'm going to increase you by ten x." Cool. Like, I'll make that deal with you. That's not a sweetheart deal. That's a great deal for me, the person that stands to gain a lot of money. So what's the problem? And who? And, and to address your other point about the board, it's his company. Why can't he appoint who he wants to the board? Because that's the the role of the board is actually not to do the bidding of the CEO. Sure. It's actually to take to care of the shareholders. And the CEO and take yeah. care and of the shareholders. And they did. The, yeah, here, he increased the company by 10x. They did their job. Right. He did. And I I would have an issue with it if the st if the stakeholders didn't have a chance to vote on it, right? If the board said, this is the pay package and this is what we're doing, right? But the shareholders who will be directly affected did get to vote and did vote on it and approve it. Now, was it too much, right? That's the question they should have been asking. Maybe they didn't think he was going to hit it. And they're like, yeah, go for it, Elon. You know, I don't know, right? Go kill yourself on this impossible task. I don't know, but it's... um they voted they voted and they approved it and so it's i i don't know why the judge didn't weigh in before when it was approved right that's and maybe the lawsuit just wasn't well, brought up then yeah lawsuit and, right so the lawsuit's just gonna take time but it's that's like it's the people who are going to be affected is it's it's you know it's um what is it the tax the taxation without representation right it's uh -huh. like if you're gonna if you're gonna tax me, I gotta be represented, right? So if you're like, if you're gonna tax my pay package or my Tesla shares, right, a twelve percent tax, I get to vote on it. They voted, right? And it's yeah. like, was it egregious? You you decide, right, with your vote. So 
a grin, maybe there's a minority stakeholders, right? That were like, well, we weren't happy with this. And there were a but, lot who were not happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> They're and, my, and they should buy more shares. Well, <laughs> right. And it's like, here's at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, okay. You're not happy, but you did make a lot of money off of it. And, yeah. you, and you, um, you're going to gain, you, you have gained more than you've lost. Right. Is, is okay. way say. more. Which, which raises my, my second point, which I threw it out just in passing, but I think it's worth discussing that there have been people making the argument that Tesla is effectively a meme stock at this point. Mm -hmm. If you look at the number of cars that Tesla is selling compared to any other major car manufacturer, they're yes. almost like a drop in the bucket, right? So Toyota is selling something like 20 million cars a year and Tesla is at like 400,000. Yeah. Yet, if you look at Tesla's market cap, it's like 50 times Toyota's. There's no way that the stock price is actually in any way connected to revenue, future profits, anything like that. It's basically the like the 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 share price of Elon Musk, right? That they're basically saying, oh, we like Elon Musk, so we're going to put a whole bunch of money into Tesla. I'm interested in your opinions on this, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, did I benefit from this? I personally benefited from this, right? Uh, it was a meme stock. It went up, it went down. I happened to buy at the right time, so I get it. But what's your take? Is Tesla a meme stock? Uh, 100% is. Um, there, it, its forward P ratio is really high, really high. I mean, the, the only thing that's higher than it is an NVIDIA. And, uh, <laughs> and um, it's... So yeah, it, 100%. It, it is uh you, it, so the the one justification you could say is that it if he can accomplish all the things that he's promised, then it's going to be worth what it's worth, right? And so right now it'd be the robo taxis and robots, right? Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, Elon Musk has been pretty good uh, he has a pretty good track record of delivering on his promises not good on delivering on his deadlines, right? Hitting his oh, deadline. Okay. So and, I was going to say the full self-driving package that was promised right. in 2012. Well, well where he's like 12 years 2013, late. 2014, yeah. 2015. Yes. Yeah. Right. That's not, it's not going to hit by 2030 is my bet at this point. We're not going to have full self-driving Teslas by that point. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I got to show you this. <laughs> And Tom has left. This, Tom has left the This building. is what my father gave me. He handed this to oh, me. Oh, jeez. It printed out? Yeah, Self-driving Tesla how, this is how he in a parked news. patrol car. <laughs> that was from 2014. Um, or is it 2024? No, 2024. Uh, oh, it's 20, June okay. 14th. Okay. Yeah. I, just, I just saw but, a short video today of a guy yeah. in, in full drive mode, and his car didn't recognize a train. And it was like speeding by with the thing down oh, and it's no. kind of foggy. So he grabs the wheel right before he hits a speeding train and, right. and like jacks it and saved himself. But it's like, woo. Hey, I, I've, I've had a Tesla since 2018, right? I love my car. Love it. Would I trust it to drive me around? Not in a million years. Well, I mean, but it has the it has the disclaimer on there. Like you are in charge of the car, even if right. it's in self-drive mode. Yeah. So he's not saying it's there yet. Yeah, but he, he keeps promising. He promises, <laughs> right? Okay, no, but he I, every I six wanna, months he's like, "It's six months away." Six point, months. Next update. Next update. Full. The point I'm bringing up is that. <laughs> so I don't. I don't know if you. I brought this up on on here before, but Tesla has a 100 percent self driving crash report ratio. So every 100 percent of every crash on the self driving is reported. Mm -hmm. So, so. It, which will give the impression that it's in wildly unsafe. In reality, it is. It has a better driving record than an average human. Oh yeah, but, for sure. But it gets reported as mm -hmm. wildly dangerous, right? Uh -huh. So, is it perfect? This is the thing I talk about constantly, right? If you watched, so did you? Anyone watch the fourth uh, SpaceX rocket? Um, so. The, the SpaceX, the Starship, right? Yeah, Rocket I didn't went launch off. it, but I heard about it, yeah. Yeah, it la it made it soft landing, which was, a big, that was their goal, was it would come back into, um, back into the, re make, it, make a successful re-entry, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. They have they have hit every single every test has hit every single one of its goals. The first one was like just get up to some thing. The second one was get to separation. The, the other one was getting to a, like a second stage separation. And this fourth one was this. But if you re- watch the news, how it was reported was like Elon Boom. Musk <laughs> rocket blew up on reentry <laughs> and like it totally exploded. And they're like, we never said we were planning for it to like not explode. We just wanted to get to this. And every time they hit every single one of their markers. If you watch how it was reported, it was like Mm -hmm. you would think he was a complete failure. And like what keeps happening is he does. He's failing his way to success. Elon Musk is extremely good at iterating off of failure. That's like one of his the things he does extremely well. Fails, 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 fails and gets better and better and better very fast. He's an extremely good iterator. And like. But if you watch the way it's news, he, like this guy yeah. is the biggest idiot moron you've ever seen on the planet. But yet he keeps in creating. I mean, that was the largest rocket we've ever launched, and it came down successfully. No one has ever done anything. It has four times the power of Star Starliner, which is like the Boeing and Lockheed Martin's competing um, project that's being done right now, right? And it's like it's going it's going fast. Like their deadlines are going faster than Starliner. It's uh, like to the magnitude of like 10 magnitudes cheaper than the Starliner project. Right. Sheesh. Like, and it's just like, we, it is so successful. It is be, like, it's beyond, but if you like li- listen to the media, it. you yeah. would be like, Oh, this guy's an idiot. And you're like, it's anyway, I, I that's, I guess that's part of why. I mean, like if I want to get political at this, this is the thing. Someone brought this up and I thought it was so interesting. He's like, name all the billionaires that are conservative. Name Ryan, name them all. Name them. There are several thousand billionaires at this point, and I don't know all of them. So, right. Uh, most of them. Most Mo- of them are actually, yeah, no, because no, we no. don't know most of them. Oh, yeah, no. for sure. No, uh-huh. no, no. I mean, like, if you, if we just go off of like Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Seagull, yeah, but Seagull, those are the ones uh, you know. Those are right, just the ones you know. Right. All because the hedge the- fund managers, all of these guys, like, the, them, the yes. governor okay. of North Dakota or whatever, who's potentially a Trump running candidate, conservative, very Bill conservative. Yeah. yeah. Like there are plenty of billionaires out there who are conservative. And I would guess that it's actually the vast majority of them are conservative. No, it's, it's just the ones that we know, right? Because they're public facing. Some of them tend to be more progressive. But no, the vast majority of billionaires are going to be very conservative. Tom so obviously looked up the number. It. Why are you looking it up? Like, Challenge why accepted. Are you now, I will. I'll, I'll dig it up because, like, okay, yes, please do. I've. I don't. I don't have an exact number, but yes, I've had it quoted to me. Like quoted to me that it that they are the the, the vast majority are liberal. Um, um, but can I weigh in on Ryan's point? Yes. Which I point? Talked for a while. Uh-oh. What did I do? Well, I just want to weigh in. You guys invited <laughs> me on the show. I kind of like to talk once in a while. Yeah, You're not allowed to talk. I, no, I guess. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. No, I'm just eye candy that I just sit here and look good. <laughs> yes. No, so Ryan made the point about the bidet this whole time. Yeah, Tesla doesn't mean stock or something. Yeah, else. that that it's uh, the stock price is too high. They're not selling enough cars. Well, there's a reason the stock's high, and Tom addressed it very well. I mean, te- the the battery technology that Tesla does, like Elon's really innovating. That's what people are investing in, in my opinion. I don't know the stock market well enough. Like, I'll I'll to defer to Tom on the stock market stuff. Like, I have a. Uh, a vote from Charles Schwab right here that just showed up for some of my stock. I'm going to let Tom vote. I have no idea. I don't <laughs> freaking know. Um, but this kind of refutes Ryan's other point that he made uh, a while back that uh, the argument is Elon's not doing his due diligence by the by the shareholders of Tesla because his loyalties are divided with all these other companies. Well, I mean, everything the guy touches turns to gold and he innovates incredibly. And he's like such a great figurehead that people will just throw money at him. So that really refutes that whole argument that his loyalties are divided and he's not focused 100% on the company. Right. That's where I wanted to, to uh, jump in there. You guys ready for the wild card moment? Uh Oh yeah. Okay. I'm attacking sure. Tom. Here we Ooh. go. Here we go. Okay, Tom. So our guy, uh, Jordan Peterson, one of the big things that he talks about is the the power structure, the hierarchical structure in in a society or an economy when when it's 
uh, more obtuse in that pyramid and more people on the bottom are served, it's better. As soon as it gets more acute, which happens very quickly in communism and, and you know, authoritarianism and these kind of things, then the whole structure topples. And his argument is in capitalism, it's a much slower um, shrinking of that of that angle, right? The, mon mm. the money and the power accretes more slowly at the top in mm. capitalism, but it does accrete. So how many billions do, needs to be in the hands of Elon and Bezos and just a few people before this is a problem? Because I agree, $56 billion is an egregious amount of money. I'm, 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 you know, going back on my earlier argument, right? I'm trying <laughs> yes. to help you, Ryan. Don't you okay. jump in right no, now. No, no, no. Don't I'm you jump like, in. Yeah, okay. Okay. Tom Listen. said we were picking on you last time, so I'm being a wild card. I promise. Okay. Yes. I got it. Okay, Tom. So, it, are we ruining our society by not by not putting our foot down and saying, "Yeah, Elon, you got too much money." Okay. So, all right, I'll get into this. So, so first off, it's funny that you said Jordan Peterson because there's actually a quote that I was thinking of when Ryan was talking was there's actually a quote about him talking about the Pareto effect, right? That mm -hmm. eighty twenty rule that you know twenty percent of the people are giving producing eighty percent of the results and he and so he was actually talking about Elon Musk and he was saying based on results we should actually be giving Elon more resources more, yeah right we should give him cuz he's he's very e incredibly efficient with resource that's pretty much his superpower is resource mm -hmm. allocation right that's what he does that's what he's really good at and kind of what you were saying Josh is like yeah, he's got managers running because he's clearly like not at Tesla every day. So that's what he's good at. He's getting good. Get, he's good at getting people in mm -hmm. places to produce results that do it efficiently. And um, so there's that argument that he really he sh we should be throwing more stuff at him. And like uh, and you're like, you're well, he's divided. We're like, well, that's clearly not an issue because he's hitting his targets. Right. Um and then the, the so but here's the thing this is but i want to to flip this on its other side right because i act, actually absolutely agree with you and one some uh, uh, sort of like a, a, a thesis i sort of wrote uh, and this is kind of funny because it goes right into what i was talking to ryan about before we got on the call was like um there's this kind of thesis i've been writing out called and part of it is like the cowardice of men is what i and there's more to it but uh but Men, I, I, I have a firm belief that every man should be a small business owner, right? Every man should be running his own business. Maybe you're an employee for a little point, but at some point you should get yourself to be a small business owner because the the the, the way you reduce prices of products, the way you reduce uh, corruption within companies and governments, um, the way you reduce monopolies, it's all competition. We need more competition. Competition is what keeps all these things in check. It keeps other companies in check from getting too powerful. It keeps them from colluding with governments, right? You get, you need more competition because they, they snitch on each other. They compete with each other. They like, it's, it's, that's what we need. And we're seeing the, the opposite of that, right? We're seeing at the top, we're seeing this me the mega corpse, right? Mm -hmm. And they're consolidating all these resources. They're just gobbling up these companies. And, and right. And what, what, like in the stock market, we're seeing a huge, it's called a, a divergence of breadth, right? We're seeing the mega corpse. It was something like 25% of all the gains in the stock market this year were in NVIDIA alone, right? It's, yeah, really? it's just this insane. It was like eight stocks that did like 75% wow. of the growth. It was yes. pretty that, insane. That's and crazy. Like, you what you're seeing is the the lower it's called the Russell 2000 it's the lower 2000 small caps companies they're getting hammered and like they're not doing well but like you've got the megacorps they're like hitting all time highs and so mm -hmm. and they're bringing the stock market up and so and it's because of interest rates right they're more susceptible to interest rates whereas actually these big megacorps have tons of money so they're actually benefiting from high interest rates because they can you know that one they're they're protected from it and two they can they get they're making interest right off of all their money and so by the federal government <laughs> right and so it's that's a huge problem so i agree with that is that elon musk's fault no that's everyone else's fault that's that we've sold 
ourselves for security for a job, right? Through wage, wage slavery is what a lot of people, the derogatory term, right? Is that by, it's a lot, it's really easy to be a, an employee and just get your paycheck and, uh, and never go into the arena yourself. Right. And I think too many people have chosen that and it's a huge problem. Right. And I think it's creating like, the thing is, America does it, I think, better than anyone else. We create small corporations and small businesses, and Utah does it better than any any other state. But um, And I think that actually feeds into a lot of Utah's prosperity and why it's done well economically. It's one of, you know, one of the best states to live in, best managed state, et cetera, et cetera, but uh, is, is, I think, because of small small businesses. And I think people should be doing it more often. But yeah, I so... Yeah, I agree with you. It's a problem, right? I don't, we're getting way too much wealth consolidation at the top and, and, and that leads to power, leads to corruption, leads to waste, right? And so that's, it's, yes, I agree. I would agree with you. But, but I think. Love that conversation. You're welcome, Ryan. Doing your job for you. <laughs> Tax the rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, baby. No. That, that doesn't <laughs> fix it though. That really doesn't fix it. I had to throw it in. Come on. I like, I I like to it. throw that in. You in the knew that was things. coming. Like, there was no way that I was not going to say that. I set you up for it. I, told, <laughs> I, get, I get it. Uh, that was like throwing me a softball. Come on. No, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the way out of that. Because I, I think Jordan's right. Jordan Peterson's right. That capitalism is the the best way to slow that aggregation of power at the top and, and money at the top. I don't know how you fix that apart from a bloody revolution and kill everybody or um, Tax the rich. Let's, that, that doesn't work. That's tried. It doesn't work. <laughs> the only other option is going to be a uh, fight club kind of reset. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, right? I agree. It's you, the, the, the solution is more competition, but in, in lieu of that, right. It's like, it's like a French revolution or something like yeah. that. Right. It's cut um, off their heads, get out of guillotine. It, unfortunately, and I don't know if we're going to get more competition, right? We got people Why leaving the work. Uh, yeah, you guys are talking about cutting off Elon Musk's head. Like, no, I'm, not I'm Elon's kind of head. No, we don't that. want that, but that's <laughs> like... <laughs> politicians. It's the politicians that are the problem. Uh, then you should actually be really happy with the FTC right now, who's cracking down on all of the monopolistic practices of these major companies. Yeah, they are. I. I don't have any uh uh I, I don't have a lot of sympathy for the megacorps, right? No. They're going after Amazon, they're going after Facebook, they're going after Good. a lot of different companies, yeah, right? They're, now. they're during, uh, during basically the two... outlawed uh non competes, right? Yep. Which is a huge Which is good. thing in the industry. Good. Um, well, during the two thousand eight crash when when Obama was it Obama whoever was saying, you know, these car companies are too big to fail. Oh. Yeah. So We've allowed these these monopolies to take over the industry, and the one of the federal government's core jobs is anti-monopoly, antitrust. That's what they're supposed to be doing, and they're not doing it. And then you have the government decreeing these these companies are too big to fail. Right. We have yeah. lost the plot. That's so, that's crazy. Um, a kind of a tangent, but not really. Um, the one of the people who actually helped engineer all of this, right? was actually a major lobbyist for the big tech companies. He was on the books for Google and Facebook for a lot of these big tech companies. The Wall Street Journal actually just reported on him because he was a law professor at George Mason University and uh, was sleeping with a bunch of his students, uh, which Whoa, is a big no-no. Stand up Not guy. allowed to do that. It, that's right? a big no-no, right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's uh, why you became a professor. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just that's why you became a minor issue, issue, right? Oh, yeah. Um, but he he basically just lost all of his business when that came out. Uh, but he he took his lobbying career and um, parlayed that into a seat on the Federal Trade Commission and jammed through a vote that restricted the power of the Federal Trade Commission to restrict monopolistic practices. And that was a policy all the way up until the Biden administration took over, and then they changed it. So, which is weird, right? So, hmm, I, and I'm not trying to make that necessarily a political argument, right? Oh, well, I'm the, in favor the of it. The big tech companies job, tend to be left-leaning. I'm, I'm conceding that, right? But they were hiring an attorney to help them avoid, you know, being accused of monopolistic right. practices, which, which, which is just share, shareholder interest, right? So they're right. trying to make which money. Which is just self-preservation. Yeah, right? self-preservation. Right. So he does, he succeeds, right? Gets in, I don't remember under which administration, but he gets in 
changes the policy. And then it's actually the Biden administration is like, this is terrible. And so they undid his policy change. Now he's not on it, right? He's out. But right. uh, and now they're actually cracking. And down, he was so. sleeping with. And students. he was sleeping with his students. You're not lying. Well, at, at the FTC, then he's probably sleeping with interns or something. I mean, he was, because he was actually taking his students who he'd been sleeping with and oh got gosh. them intern positions in the I FTC. Your position. It's only Sounds like a stand-up guy. <laughs> with a low, low price. Yeah. So. so they did a three-part series on the guy. It was a big ex- expose on wow. the major lobbyist for Google. For I mean, It was a bunch of major tech companies. And now he's he running well, a daycare. Well, that's the thing. I always... <laughs> I, so here's the thing. I am not, um, I am very, I rarely uh, uh, accuse, I never vilify big companies. Companies, I call them dumb beasts. They are dumb beasts. They are just, they will naturally head towards self-preservation, right? They will do whatever, lobby, cheat, sure. lie, right? And the thing, that's why the best that's why they become so big. They're they're just they're just self preservation, and so it's competition. It's competition because a competitor will snitch on them. A competitor will turn them in. A competitor will not la- allow one to be too far in bed with the government because they'll be like, well, what's going on? What about me, right? And like uh, just like Josh said, you know, AIG, right? That was the big insurance company that we couldn't let fail in two thousand eight. And it's like, what if there were twelve of them, right? Instead, it's like, oh yeah, these three went and solvent kill them. Right. And it's like, you're now getting punishments. Now they're rewarded. Right. Oh, I'm so big. You can't let me fail. Right. It's, it's a total, uh, it's anti, it's anti-capitalist, right. Is what it is. And it's, it's a huge problem. Anti-regulated capitalism is what it is. So yeah, I don't think either of you actually want laws. I fear capitalism. All right. Uh, stop generating. Are we done with that topic? Did we beat it to death? We bet we beat it to death. (laughs) <laughs> go are elon we, are we ready for our next topic which is Let's probably going to be even worse well Ryan, uh, all yeah, right tell us about it so presumably most of our listeners i don't know how engaged they are with like political news but uh the president's son hunter biden has been in the news recently uh he was just convicted right so he is now also a convicted felon there are others out there um for a gun charge so it's against the law as a drug user, right? So if you are a, a drug addict, um, you're not allowed to buy a gun. And apparently on the federal forms, when you fill that out, it specifically asks, are you uh, you know, addicted to drugs? And he said no. Good. And then A-okay. he bought a revolver, right? So he bought a gun. Um, so he clearly lied about that. This was years ago. It was like 2012, 2013, 2014, something like that. Uh, He was in the throes of addiction. I don't think any of that's debated, right? Uh, And that's not why I'm bringing it up. Obviously, I'm going to get to a bigger point. But um, so he was, you know, they, they, they started the investigation during the Trump administration. So they were trying to dig up dirt on Hunter Biden during the Trump administration. Trump is the one who it was his, um, uh, Department of whatever is it called? Um, the legal uh, department. Department of Justice? Justice Department? Yeah, Justice Department. Thank you. The, it was his Justice Department that started the investigation. They appointed a special prosecutor, and that's what started the investigation. There's a second investigation that's still under you know underway about some tax stuff that Hunter Biden did, so that's probably going to play out as well. Um, but he was eventually convicted, right? So they basically found him guilty. It's like three hours of deliberation. The jury's like, yep, he totally did that. Um, All right. So why am I bringing this up? Two reasons. Okay. Um, Joe Biden has come out very explicitly and said he's not going to pardon him. And if he is sentenced to prison, he's not going to commute his sentence. Okay. So that's the president who has the power to do that, has explicitly said he's not going to pardon his son and he's not going to commute his sentence. Now, I want to contrast this, right, with what just happened to President Trump, okay? So Donald Trump is put on trial, right? For basically hiding payouts, right? To a porn star to cover up what he was doing, right? So he had an affair with a porn star, pays her off and then covers this up. He's convicted, right? Pays her off with election funds. and Yes. Right. And and said that these are just, you know, reimbursements to his attorney for, you know, whatever his attorney's doing. Um, Now, why I bring this up, and I want to contrast these very specifically, throughout Trump's trial, right, he's consistently saying that this is a political witch hunt, hunt, 
that he didn't do anything wrong, that this is a, you know, a breach of the justice system, that the justice system is rigged, that it makes no sense, and that this was all orchestrated by the Biden administration who are just out to get their political opponents. Okay, So Trump is saying this. Lots of Republicans are saying this about Trump's trial. Then you flip this around, and they're all on the other side saying, Hunter Biden, look, this is corrupt. They're a corrupt family. See how corrupt they are. Now, if the Biden family was genuinely that corrupt, okay, wouldn't Joe Biden have killed the investigation into his son? I thought you were going to say kill his son. (laughs) (laughs) If they were that corrupt, right, then yeah, maybe. But he would have stopped the investigation into his son. And even if he couldn't have stopped it, right? He would have immediately pardoned his son or commuted the sentence. It would have been a complete non-issue, right? So the hypocrisy here is just, it's shocking me that the law and justice party, right? That is all about like, we follow the law, the law matters, right? Got to do the right thing by the law are absolutely criticizing the legal system when it goes after Donald Trump, but 100% praising it when it goes after Hunter Biden. Okay. To me, this seems like just a massive, glaring illustration of hypocrisy um, on the part of Republicans are like, systems corrupt when we don't like it, right? But when we do like it, it's great. That's exactly how it's supposed to work. And look how corrupt the Bidens are. So that's why I'm bringing it up, right? And of course, I want to have a conversation about this, but I'm just seeing this in the news. Maybe it's the news that I'm reading. I'm reading the Wall Street Journal and they're pointing it out as well, right? So I think it's a bit of a problem when even a conservative outlet like the Wall Street Journal is like, yeah, you know, okay, maybe the charges against Trump were like not that big of a deal, but it's a fair system. So your guys' take. Uh, well, sorry, that last line you said that the Wall Street Journal is saying that Trump's charges were not that big of a deal, meaning what? They know. didn't think that he should have been prosecuted for it, right? They're like, this oh, is the, kind of a, they're this saying is probably just, not a big issue. They were almost sympathizing with Trump that, that this was like. Yeah, they didn't think it was that big of a deal. Right. right. But okay. on the on the Hunter Biden thing, right? They also were like, if it wasn't Hunter Biden, he would never have been prosecuted for this. Uh, I see. Okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, I don't know that that tracks. So you left a whole oh, bunch of things tracks. out with with the Trump thing. So he was charged in districts like the, I think it was the New York district, the, um, the prosecutor, he ran on the platform of I'm going to prosecute Trump. That's how he got elected. Okay. So then they bring this suit in his district and the hoops they jumped through for the conviction were kind of insane. They, they, uh, He's not a federal prosecutor, but these are federal charges, so he can't prosecute They're not federal them. charges. They're state charges, Josh. So he had to somehow – no, he had to tie the federal charges into state charges, and it was past the uh, – It was a federal election, but they're state charges. Statute of limitations. He had to – they were past the statute of limitations, so he had to just throw that out and bring them back. He had to jump through all these weird hoops, and then they had like 32 charges. and 34. Okay, 34 charges, and the judge instructed the jury, if you find him guilty on any of these, then he's thereby guilty of all of these. Like, it was just, uh, I, I listened to a nonpartisan legal uh, a, a, a lawyer go through all of this, and he's like, none of this makes sense what they did. Like, this never has happened. This is all brand new it was precedent. Yep, it was true. absolutely bizarre. It was obviously a political witch hunt. They, they, they jumped through so many hoops just to get Trump. Um, and that's irrefutable. They really did. But what? So, <laughs> so if you want to, irrefutable. it is. I mean, go listen to any nonpartisan legal expert. I've listened talk to about a it. lot of commentary even on even this. the guys on CNN were like, "This is this is kind of crazy that he got hit for this. Like, this has never happened." How did they get Al Capone? Right. It's always it's always these know. weird things, right? It was tax evasion for Al Capone. Okay, so let's it wasn't go back. Drug you, running and all the other stuff. It was you tax want evasion. to. Okay, you You're, want to contrast this with Hunter Biden? Okay, hundred percent. Well, That's no, what I well want to let me. So Ryan, because yeah, because because I'm trying to get at this because you're making the point that like, yeah, it's like a tax evasion thing. It's this like side door thing. We're gonna get you. We're gonna get Trump, uh-huh. and and you're kind of saying, and that's the same with Hunter Biden. They're like hundred percent. No one that, would have investigated Hunter Biden if it, if his if his name wasn't Hunter Biden because he was Hunter Biden. What? They're like, are you, oh, are you saying that people don't get thrown in jail for? 
No, they do all the time, charges? right? Okay, when, so this is a very normal thing. When did he buy this the gun, though, Josh? This is a very he normal thing to prosecute somebody ago. for. Sure, right. but it was right. completely lost in history. Nobody right. would have cared about this, but right. not except past the his statute, name's Hunter Biden. But not be, past the statute of limitations. It got, it's like, oh my gosh, you're, look at you're this. scratching it like nothing here, Josh. Right? Just conceding. The dude the he legally bought the, a gun. And, I, I'm and, conceding that. Everybody's conceding that he illegally okay. bought the gun. Okay. No so one he would have cared. <laughs> Donald Trump illegally paid out money, hush money. Right? He should go to jail by your same logic. If you're going to use that logic, he did something illegal. Right? right. Fine. But the point they, is, neither they, of they these people would have been neither would have relief. been investigated if their yeah. names weren't Donald Trump and Hunter Biden. Okay, right. I, I like what you're saying, Ryan. You're you're basically making the point that they're both political gotchas. Yes, but, either uh, they're both politically gotchas, or it's just the legal system doing its job. It's got to be one or the other, right? Why are we saying no? Hunt, uh, only Donald Trump's is a political gotcha. Hunter Biden, who could be pardoned, right, and is not going to be pardoned, that's not a political gotcha. Well, come on. Yeah, well, you're but you're also saying, sorry, you're you're saying it's either a political gotcha or it's the political system doing its job. But the but you're also system, ad, yeah. but you're also admitting that he wouldn't Hunter Biden wouldn't have been prosecuted. So it's not the political system doing its job. It, so you're saying it's a they're both political the justice gotcha. system, the justice system doing its job. Sorry, uh, it's either yeah. So that's what I, I would say. Well, yeah, I mean it, it's arguably both, right? Like I mean it, right. it's it's weird, right? Right. I'll I'll, I'll give well, I'll I'll concede. That yeah, they neither of them probably would have been prosecuted. Maybe I don't know gun law well enough to know the Hunter Biden thing. Um, if they weren't in the spotlight, okay. Mm -hmm. But Hunter Biden definitely would have been convicted because he was egregiously obvious that what he did was wrong, and nobody has ever been convicted for what Trump did. And plenty of people have done similar That's true. things. Okay, so you can't say that the justice system is just doing its job because it was clearly hijacked yeah. to get. And Trump and I think and I think Ryan's not saying that I think he's saying yes it was a political gotcha it was a sure it was like I'll a backward that. somersault to get to get Trump and but at the same time it was because because I totally agree it was people combing through uh Hunter's like things like oh hang on at this time he was on drugs and we yes. have proof and therefore we someone made this connection and then gave it to the the DOJ and when like well, look he should and, be charged and the, for this. yes and and at the end of the day I'm saying both of them did things that were wrong. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Both of them did things that were wrong. Well, yeah. When Should they be prosecuted with... for it? Okay. We can debate that. That's fine. I don't really care. Right. Both of them did things that were wrong. The I don't only think Hunter did anything wrong because he, the only he just misunderstood the political. No, Hunter just misunderstood the question on the questionnaire. Right. They asked if he was addicted to drugs. Yeah, he wanted he, a gun, and he knew if he said yeah. he, he was on drugs, well, they wouldn't He said, <laughs> I wasn't – I thought that I thought it meant if I was addicted that day. That day I was good. <laughs> that, that was actually his lawyer's argument, right? Was it? He thought Probably, it meant – but No, sure. that, that was his lawyer's argument. He thought that I the question meant, were you addicted that day? <laughs> Had you done drugs that day? And he said no. So uh, Hunter just misunderstood a question. He shouldn't – That that poor – prosecuted soul he should have not been prosecuted for that that poor guy i'm just gonna assume that you're making a joke at this <laughs> oh, point wild card. no let, let's let's okay. talk about the pardon thing because i think this is interesting and you can accuse me of conspiracy theory here but so ryan um, i'm i'm gonna agree with you on what your point i'm gonna agree i'll yeah. give you partial we'll Found go back to old ground old school common common ground. Ground. I'll, Boom. Give you, I'll give you half agreement <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree. Bastard. Neither of them, come on. Neither, neither of them would have been in the limelight at the very least if they weren't political operators. Well, right? Thank you. Yeah, I'll give you that. But Trump would. I mean, the the conviction on Trump's insane. Yeah, I mean, nobody has ever been convicted for what he was convicted of. I, I'm conceding. Lots that. of people have been convicted for what Hunter Biden did. I don't know that. So I'll give you. That, I'll give you sure. half agreement there. Um, so let's talk about the, the pardon thing. Cause I, th I find that interesting. Joe did say that he would not pardon Hunter. Well, um, when do presidential pardons happen? Oh, um, I, I totally last think. minute. And, and honestly, as... if, if I were Joe Biden, I would have said the same thing. And if I lose the election, I am 100% pardoning, pardoning, pardoning yeah. my son. So, so that's 100%. probably what and and I would walk out of that office going, Fuck all y'all. That's what I would have done. Hunter, come on, Hunter. Okay. Let's go. Okay, so so you agree? You can't oh, really it's not make even a that conspiracy. argument. I'm like, yeah, Joe, I right now. 
<laughs> he's probably going to pardon his son if he faces jail time, right? Uh, um, no, I think if he loses the election, if he wins the election, Hunter serves. Maybe, to, but, to, but that a, leads me to, as a point. To, he's making a political that point. Leads me to not corrupt. Yeah. No, why? Why would he do that? I think it's to. Uh, it, it's like a. Um, what's that? That thing that uh, people do with when they're hiding the ball in the cups and it's like oh. a sleight of hand. Yeah. It's yeah. a. It's a. You know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Sleight of hand. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, a fan. it's a trick. Um, yeah, he doesn't want anybody looking bait, deeper. Bait and switch. Yeah, it's it's a bait and switch. He wants people looking. Oh yeah, oh, he has a, a he has herring. a little gun conviction red herring over here, and we'll slap him on the wrist because he doesn't want people looking at the. Oh, the, please the bring fact. up the laptop. Bring up the laptop. Yes. I read so much about this laptop after You're our last work. Bring it up. Come when, on. When you Let's refuse to that talk path. about it. No, I was actually. Oh, yeah, up I'm ready. Ukraine, the, the business dealings in Ukraine. The reason that, you know, there's a war Big over there right burger. now. Big and nothing uh, burger the over Chinese, there. all of the Chinese deals that Hunter Another was. Big nothing burger. No, they're not. Okay, 100%. we should we should do a podcast about that. 100%. So, We'll just so read you the Wikipedia entry. Call me a conspiracy theorist about this, but <laughs> I think this is why Joe would be willing to give his son a slap on the wrist because he doesn't want to be drawn in himself with all of the crap that hunters, uh, uh, you know, all of all of these bad business dealings and all of the, uh, in my opinion, treasonous stuff that Joe's uh, up to his neck in. So th- I think <laughs> that's why. And you can laugh about it. And say I'm it's totally laughing burger, about it. But it there's is plenty of evidence. Burger. There is plenty no evidence. of evidence. No, I, I read. I spent like five hours reading about Hunter Biden's laptop. There is nothing there. There is oh, nothing no. meaningful there where, about where Joe did you Biden. Read it? Uh, that was straight from Wikipedia. And then I went to the Wall Street Journal and the Wall Street Journal was offered the story and they turned it down because they shocker. said nothing implicates Joe Biden in any of these emails. Shocker. And the, the uh, evidence chain is horrific on this i would say they're smoking guns but you're right there is no evidence but that's why you would have a special investigation right the two fine evidence that's why they started the special investigation trump started the special investigation into hunter biden to try and discredit joe biden that's why they did it and well, all they could find was tax evasion by hunter biden and a gun charge which is what got trump impeached Huh? Right, is that he was starting the investigation into? No, he never got impeached for that. He got impeached yeah, for two other things for the Ukraine thing. That was Ukraine phone call. He was for the Ukraine phone call. That's yeah, what it that was. was. He was tied. trying to find crap on on, on Joe Biden. Biden. Say, yes. I, yeah. What's going on with this Ukraine thing? I want to know. Like, is Joe and Biden? It looks really bad. Thing? Was he paid? And they were like, everyone was like, Ugh, clutch your pearls. And and as soon as the guy, I mean, you say it's a nothing burger, but as soon as the, I think it was a prosecutor in Ukraine. Started looking into it. What did Joe do? Who was vice president at the time? He demanded that guy be removed. He he told Ukraine, "I'm withholding all of this aid until that guy gets fired." This literally happened. So you can yeah. call it a nothing burger, but this so is that, it's that's what I'm burger. saying. There's a there's, there's there. a lot of smoking guns, but I you mean there's a lot of smoke, no guns. No, I think they're smoking guns. Yeah. But like, well, I just gave you a smoking gun, and you just called it a nothing burger. Nothing burger. And then you just laughed. Nothing, and said, nothing there. Um, Ryan, I don't know where you, you guys wanna... are getting your news, because honestly, if you look at an independent news source, all of them, because again, who broke the story Back on Hunter Biden's news. laptop? It was a tabloid. The New York Post, again, yeah. we're bringing it back up. It was a tabloid. None our of last, the legitimate our last podcast was about resources. how we can't trust the news. I know. Ryan, like, okay. And you agreed. Ryan, if we're okay, if we're going, this was one interesting thing about the Hunter Biden story. At the trial, there was an FBI agent which talked about the laptop, the, about the laptop. Yes. Yep. What's interesting is, and that they had it since 2019 in their possession. Yep. Yet there are news stories with FBI agents saying, we don't know what this laptop is. It looks like Russian disinformation, like mm-hmm. Rush, FBI on air, on national programs saying it looks like disinfor- Russian disinformation when they had it in their possession. Completely lying and no. not telling the truth in order. Uh-uh. Well, they just it's didn't more know? complicated than that. They no, it's confused. more complicated than that because. Okay, I don't know how much. I mean, I know Josh knows this, right? You can take an image of a hard drive, right? So you can just take an image of a hard drive. So you can take all the files, turn it into an image. It's an ISO. 
boom, you've got it. So the guy at the repair shop, the owner of the repair shop, he gets this laptop, right? The guy is basically legally blind. So he can't confirm that it was actually Hunter Biden who dropped off the laptop. He gets the laptop and he takes an image of the hard drive because he's supposed to repair it because it's supposedly got water damage, right? So he gets the image. Then he's like, oh, I was looking through it. So one, he's already violating somebody's privacy, but fine. So he does that. He gets the image. And then who does he give the image to? The uh, Giuliani. Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. Right? Right. And then when they bring in outside experts to actually try and verify the image, not the one that Rudy Giuliani has, but the one from the guy, the guy that originally had it, they go in and they're like, wow, okay. So this image has been modified multiple times since you claim that you actually got it Mm. from Hunter Biden. Right. There have been people tampering with this. We can't verify the vast majority of the emails that you're finding on this. We can verify yeah. some of them. Some of them are legitimate, but there's been a lot of tampering. So they bring in actual experts and they're like, this looks like Russian disinformation because it's been tampered with. Right. Okay. So I think the story is actually more complicated than just this is Hunter Biden's laptop, no tampering whatsoever. But- when the FBI says this could be Russian disinformation, I actually think it's probably a complicated situation. The same well, FBI who say, is on record sorry, telling let me, that they're not going to let Trump get elected. The hang, same FBI. Hang on, Josh. Oh, let, would you? Because like a fair statement would have been like we can't verify this is the laptop, right? Not to jump to the conclusion yeah. that it's Russian disinformation. That would be a better or or claim they don't know about it when it's in their possession. Well, it's just like we can't verify it. this is unverifiable. Therefore, we're not going to run the story or something. That seems more plausible and the like to say that right because like which is what the wall street journal said we can't there was verify zero this. evidence to suggest that it was russian disinformation right that that was a strange place uh, to, a conclusion to jump to no, but then the, i don't the, think so but. and the other great point that i think someone brought that, that someone brought up was in the 2016 election there was the steel dossier that the clintons had paid to have released completely unverifiable which the media completely ran with right and like untotally unverified and they were like yeah look at the story and da, 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 da. oh we won't even mention that it was not verified but like <laughs> we're totally fine publishing this but the other one they're like whoa 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 not only do they not say that it's not very it, it's unverified they jump to a conclusion that it's like oh we think it's russian descent and you're like that is like a huge the, jump right and nobody and Contrast Nobody would report on it. Did. No liberals knew about it going into the election. We'd knew all about heard it. about it. We no, just didn't think it was a they, big deal. No, 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 no. They did they did poll after poll asking people if you had known about this or did you know this before the oh, election? Yeah. No. Uh would that have affected your vote? Yes. Like there was a right. whole bunch of polls that they did. Most liberals, the vast majority of liberals, had never heard about a, a Hunter Biden laptop scandal. Yeah, but but Josh, the vast majority of progressives haven't heard anything about anything politically most people are not connected that is a politically. terrible re- refutation of the argument there <laughs> come on but it's true and you know it's true okay but so your so your <laughs> argument there is is most people uh, are not paying attention oh my right. gosh oh okay. my gosh last last thing i want to say on this ryan <sighs> is is nobody above the law Ooh, uh, I would 100% say no one is above the law. Really? I, I, from my perspective, I don't think anybody should be above the law. Oh, are there yeah, people who, be. yeah, okay. Yeah, okay, so you're, you're asking a different question. Is nobody yes. above the law? Is nobody uh, above the law? To quote my, my esteemed brother, Danny, who was a lawyer, I don't know if you were there, Josh, when he said this. He basically said, unless it's a federal case, right? If it's a federal case, that's different. If it's not a federal case, if you have enough money, I will keep you out of prison right. forever. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, truth. there are people who are above the law because yeah. they have enough money to basically fight yeah. the system indefinitely. So Good. he did say the federal government is really the only place where you can't do that because they can basically just squash your motion after motion after motion and jam this through. And right? you can't like, yeah, I guess but, you can't appeal it, but yeah. Right. But, but even there like, anywhere else. I mean, yeah, we can even see right there. Now. Rich people rarely go to jail or go to jail for a long time. Yep. Well, so and, and I guess the second point I'd bring up is are it sounds like you, Ryan, you are citing that most of these 
lawsuits that have been presented to Trump the year before the election are politically motivated because they wait. are gotchas. You mean the the prosecutions, the charges that have been leveled yeah. against Trump? Yeah, many of the the charges, like the property chart, the inflated property charge in in Mara Logo, right? That's been Logo that was put up in New York. Yeah, that he lost, right? So he lost that. He's appealing that. Right. Um, would I say that's political? I would say if if what you mean by political is did people look into it because he's Donald Trump, then yes. I would say 100% that's true. Right, right. right. Because are there other corrupt uh, landlords and business owners and real estate owners in New York City who are doing the yes. same thing? Right. 100%. Are right. they getting away with it? Yes, because yes. there are no-name billionaires that nobody right. knows. Are they looking into it because he's Donald Trump? Absolutely. Does that mean it's politically motivated by Joe Biden? I don't think that's necessarily the case. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's Joe because Biden. he's a high profile figure. They're looking into this. I think that's I would concede that. Yes. The I don't know if you heard this. So there was the John Stewart did a story on it. Mm -hmm. And on that case, right, talking basically talking about the ins this is like two or three months ago, or well, maybe maybe longer. And then someone brought up someone brought up a did some research and showed that John Stewart had basically done the exact same thing. He bought a property inflated and sold it to some guy, you know, at an inflated <laughs> price. Then the guy had to sell it at a loss and then and was like going it was mad about it. And they brought it up to the attorney general and the attorney general, okay, we're looking into this, right? And they're like it's not gonna go anywhere. Well, it will or it won't, but the fact that it's happening, the exact wow. same thing yeah. is happening, and he's it didn't, you know, it's not getting just exactly as you said, it's not getting noticed right. by because because he's not a people, huge name. He's not a politician. Because he doesn't have his enemies like Donald Trump yeah. does, right? So no, I would yeah. totally concede that. The reason why I, they're looking into those specific items, right? Now, what he did in Georgia, I mean, that's that's a complicated one, right? The confidential documents in Florida, that's a complicated one. I and I mean, arguably, like you can't you can't divorce those from the political situation. They're actually political, right? Like they're literally about politics. And then the January 6th one, right? So those are the other three that he's presumably on trial for, but like they're on pause as we wait for the Supreme Court to make a decision. Um, all of those are about politics. So I don't think there's any way to divorce politics from them because they're literally about political actions that he took. So yeah. I... I don't know how you wrestle with those in any other way other than to say, sure, they're political, but it's because he was doing politics. He was just doing them <laughs> illegally. So, well, yeah, it, uh, there's he, like the word lawfare has been used, right, as a term that he's being, and I would 100% agree that he's being targeted. Hey, Josh, sit up. This is <laughs> he was doing that on purpose. I was just waiting. No, he was doing. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I can't pee. <laughs> Sloucher. Uh, either that, or you were getting a full bidet wash there. They were in the full service. I get to get, get a, a little, little lower on my back. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> what were you saying? Because I have one more point. Sorry, it's a question sorry, that I want to ask. That was pretty funny. <laughs> what well, that? It, it's yeah. That basically, it's. I, even if you're right, which uh, I, I definitely I agreed with your statement completely that like he's being because of who he is, people are scrutinizing and trying to find things just yes. like they did with Hunter Biden. Right. Yeah. They're uh -huh. Like, oh, because we're going to look, take a look and find something you did wrong. Um, and th that that that's happening. But yeah, th this is basically it's it's a lot this term lawfare. Right. That they're basically trying to throw laws, trying to find ways that he broke laws there's so like one someone brought up something interesting that um joe biden had found they found uh classified documents right and we, we've talked about this before yep. and the argument was that, that but when when they found it he was like oh i'm sorry here you go but when they found trump's he was like no i'm keeping it and go to yeah. heck right well and, the they let they let Joe off because they said he was too befuddled to know what he was doing or something yeah like that, right? that's what they said in the report but the and problem was also, is yeah, he was so, what Tom was saying. He participated, like he helped. He was like, "Sorry, my bad." But but the problem is, is that someone brought this up that that's obstruct. Like Trump is a is guilty of holding unclassified documents and obstruction, right? Because right. he wouldn't he wouldn't participate. Biden is still guilty of holding these classified yeah. documents, and 
therefore, like if Trump is charged on obstruction, that's one thing. But if he gets charged for the holding classified documents, then Biden should be as well because Biden is guilty, right? And so was Hillary Clinton. And and then like, but like if he gets if it gets applied to him, but then Joe gets off the hook because yeah, he's an old guy or whatever the reason, that's a complete like uh, yeah, un, un, that's fair. unlateral application of the law. And like it's and it feels like that's what's happening right now. Like we're seeing this where yeah, there not only is there scrutiny, but there's also some some partial a- application of the law. This and, this is a great segue into my last question. Yes, if Eric Trump mm-hmm. had done exactly what Hunter Biden had done, do you think Donald Trump would pardon him? Yes, one hundred percent. I think I think he's smart enough to do the same thing Joe's going to do. I I, I, I don't think Trump would have I hesitated. Think, I think if oh no, I agree. Well, I don't know. That's Trump an interesting is, question. Trump is he's he's so morally bankrupt he would yes. not hesitate for a second. Oh, 100 percent. And so here's the thing. And okay, is- wait, wait, wait. What you you think Joe is not pardoning his son because he's moral? No, it's all about politics. I, I think it's face. it's 95 percent about it politics and five percent about to morality. Do with- Joe yeah. is Joe is not moral. This is what drives me crazy. I freely admit, Tom freely admits that Trump's a piece of crap, <laughs> but we have to defend his policies, or I'm I'm over here defending him for the sake of the argument. <laughs> and you claim like you hold on to this crazy claim that Joe is a moral good person when there's no evidence of that. He's a lifelong politician. That should be all I have to say, and you, and you excoriate him, but there's all of this <laughs> all of this evidence showing how terrible he is, and I've told you how he's like, terrible stuff he's done with Secret Service agents and, and women, and like he has all sorts of bad charges. He's not a good guy, Ryan. He's a bad guy. He's a really bad person. I'm sorry. He, he just is. is. I'm a, like, th- here's the thing. Everyone can agree Hunter Biden's a bad dude. Well, not not bad, but like messed up. He's a mess. Yes. He's, he's a, a bad dude. He would sniff I don't know after if he his sister in law after he his, still is, but he after certainly his brother was, died. Yeah. He oh, was sniffing at his sister in law immediately. Like that was bad. Yeah. And then and then his sister in law's sister. Yeah. Not a it's good bad. dude. Like it's bad. Freely admits to like Oh, snorting cocaine off of prostitutes and stuff. I've seen like, the videos. There were videos of him running around naked with a bunch of prostitutes. Right. I've it, totally seen that. I get it. it. it, it and sure. and his cousin, I think. Like, I think it would have been. <laughs> there, I don't. And his cousin's dog. And like, keep I don't going, think Josh. There was this is any good. hope that they were going to. <laughs> they were going to exonerate Hunter no. in this, in, and that's why it was like, oh, three hours, and then like, oh yeah, guilty on all car- charges, like. There's so much evidence. It's ridiculous, right? You're a mess. Yeah. And I don't think there was any hope that like, there might've been a conversation like maybe we can't now we can't. And, like, <laughs> he's human. But I think to Josh's point is like, nobody cares about this, right? Nobody cares. Like the guy's a nobody mess. Nobody cares about what? What do you mean? Uh, Clarify. This. Hunter's not the president. Well, yes, exactly. The, yeah, Hunter's the president's a son who's just doing this. stupid stuff with life. What we're concerned about, it's all the other stuff, right? On the we want to know where was Hunter really peddling influence with his with his father, right? With with national, uh, you know, sovereign groups, and and uh, uh, that's what we want to know, and that's what we care about. This is this is a sideshow, in my opinion, yeah. and it's that's sort of why like, they're doing oh, it. Look, look, that's why look, I called it a red hair. Guilty too. See, we we apply the law equally. Look, nothing to yep. see here is what it feels like. We're not going to pay attention to why he was paid $150,000 a month by Burisma and how he got this job he was not qualified for. Right. We're not going to talk about paid that. By national Chinese Let's get him on a gun charge and put him in jail for a week. Right. Like, and how he, you know, and how he makes transfers to his father for, you yeah. know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. yeah. This, where did, that where did, has where, never been verified. Where did all these so millions of dollars come from well, with, with the Biden family? Like. No, we that's have what we care he's about. gotten the money. We just don't know what it was for. That's that's so we we do know he got transfers, but we just don't know what. But it just it Biden. all looks it's smoking gun. That's what I'm saying. I know Hunter got the transfers. I don't think Biden like I don't think Joe Made Biden transfers ever got to transfers. Biden. Yes, I, I'd Biden like to said see the there were loan that. repayments. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, the um uh. Why are you defending him, Ryan? I don't get it. Point. Why do you okay, defend him? Because this is this is getting to my major point. 
which is the hypocrisy. Did Eric and Donald Trump Jr. do the exact same thing throughout Trump's presidency? What? what? Peddling influence. I don't know. If they did, lock him up, but I don't see evidence he of had, it. He had his own hotel, right, that he was never willing to give up in D.C., and there were all of these people from around the world coming to stay in his hotel, and of course, his sons, right, who are in the White House all the time, his daughter is in the White House, his son-in-law is in the White House, yeah. doing his bidding, right? Yeah. Sure. They're peddling influence left and right, making away bank, right? Are they, are they the taking reason why, taxpayer dollars, or are they just mean, like... Are they, they're literally getting paid by taxpayers. You're they're saying... literally getting paid by, it, right? But they're also uh, for their jobs, for the sure. jobs they've been appointed to. Yeah, but That's you think that influence. you think that Eric That's and Donald nepotism. Trump Jr. never got any money to say, "Hey, make a connection with your dad for me." I guarantee they did. If, right? If they did, they should be in jail. Okay, but here's my point: no one is raising that point right now. They're saying we want to know about Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden, he had to have been peddling influence. Donald Trump's kids were peddling influence the whole time, too. My point is, no, listen, hear me out. My point yeah. is, no one's going to prosecute them for that, for peddling influence, because everybody in D.C. does that. Peddles influence. Mm -hmm. oh, that that I, is the name of the game, I right? Agree. If you have connections to political people, that's that's called politics. Welcome okay. to politics. But you just right? admitted that, that both of these guys were being... Uh, hunted for political reasons, being prosecuted for political reasons. That was Hunter your first, Biden and Donald Trump. That yes. was your first statement. Yes. So, but but now you're saying that uh, that no one's going to be prosecuted for saying, "Hey, wouldn't I introduced my dad to somebody." The, okay. Right. Okay. Sorry, Ryan. Your, your I, argument doesn't track at all because you're, you're. Yeah, the irony it, of your argument doesn't make any sense. You you admitted that this is a political witch hunt, but if the uh, uh, the left had both something, something wrong. Okay. Yeah. If the left had something on the Trump kids, you're saying they wouldn't go after them when they just jumped through all these insane hoops to go after Trump. Your, your, your logic does not track at all. No, Sorry. Bro. I, I completely agree with Ryan. Here, here's the thing. I, so here's my, here's my beef. And this is what I say to people. I say, when I'm talking with a liberal, I sound extremely conservative. I, I sound like a Trump supporter. And when I'm talking with a conservative, I sound liberal. And what my biggest beef is, is uh, um, uh, the, the, the one side is more virtuous than the other. That Because they're all hypocrites. I'm yeah. totally agreeing with Ryan. And that's, that's my beef is when I'm like, I just oh, excoriated Ryan for that. I don't, I don't defend Trump and he defends Biden. Well, what do you agree with Ryan for? Agree with me. Take that back. <laughs> right. It's the, the that's the issue is that like, oh, Trump's a bad dude, but Biden's good. And you're like, no, no, no. They're both They're bad. bad. That's what I'm yeah. trying to say. And I'm not trying to say because I'm not trying to say Trump's good and, and Biden's bad. I'm trying to say, no, they're both dirty. They're both wallowing in it. Right. And that's the yeah. issue I get with a lot when I get in with with liberals. I'm like, no, no, you're not you're not better. And like, I, I guy's worse. No, they're both horrible. And like, if we can get there, then we're on the same page. And that's that's that, totally that's my weird. problem with Ryan's argument there. If, if there's I any said, evidence at all, Joe Biden's let not me finish a thought. No, <laughs> go, go, go. He's, if there's any evidence of all of, of Trump's kids peddling influence, lock them up. I, th I think I said that previously. You did. You did. You said, okay. It so that's my problem with your argument. You're the one being a hypocrite here saying, yeah, they should prosecute Trump's kids because they peddled influence, no. but, but not Hunter. No, I'm, Hunter saying, didn't, like, I'm saying they're not going to prosecute either of them. Either. Because Which this doesn't is track the, for your first they... argument. If it's uh, a political witch hunt, they're going to throw these people in jail for anything they can get them yeah, on. I don't and, think so. And that's that's what I'm actually disturbed about. There used to be this weird tacit understanding with all these politicians. Trump Trump ran against Hillary saying, I'm going to lock her up. And then he did nothing, right? Because there was this weird tacit understanding that they wouldn't use the Department of Justice or whatever to the prosecute their, their political rivals because then they were afraid that was going to happen to them. And now we've... We've crossed into that territory, and it doesn't appear to me. Uh, th this is the crazy part. You right at the beginning, you argued that um, either this is a fair political system; it's just doing its job, or whatever your argument was. Um, and it popped into my mind. Rush Limbaugh said when he 
well, uh, his company used to be based in New York. He was audited like 12 times. He was audited every year. And he would talk to other people like liberals and people without a name. They were never audited. So he was he was singled out because he was this outspoken conservative voice based in New York. This this is the kind of thing that scares me when this kind of stuff is leveraged against your political enemies. And that's clearly what just happened with uh, the Biden DOJ. Uh, they were just leveraged against Trump. What the crap's Trump going to do? This is going to be the tit for tat here is going to get really crazy because yeah. Trump is going to get elected. And what's he going to do in turn since they, the Department of Justice was just used as a weapon against him? Frick, like the dam's gone now. Like, okay. let's see where this but you are, this you are goes. missing one piece to that. Trump started it by going after Hunter Biden. He He's the one who appointed the special prosecutor to go after Hunter Biden. You, cool. I, I don't care. You see what I'm saying? saying? It's not that. Doesn't matter. It's not that Biden started it, right? Uh, well, Maybe okay. Biden's if retaliating, you want to, so be if it, again, but... if you want to force me to defend these people, then <laughs> Hillary started it with the Steele dossier. I don't care who started it. Uh, I I lock lock them right. all up. I'd be happy if you locked them justice. all up. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, Ryan. Um, we found common ground. I, I did want to do one quick hypothetical. Uh, not that we need to. I think we kind of resolved it, but it was kind of fun. So, Josh, imagine that our brother Danny, right, who is an attorney, we've mentioned it before, uh, he becomes a judge, right? Let's imagine he becomes a judge. And then, then um, a local business person you happen to know, right? So you know them, says, hey, is there any chance I could just take you out to lunch to just chat, right? Uh so you go out to lunch with this person, right? Local business person, and they insist on buying your lunch. And of course, over lunch, the conversation comes up. Could you introduce me to your brother? Right? Are you now guilty of political well, influence? And if peddling? I introduced them, because I've actually had this happen with Danny when he was just a lawyer. I had people I know where he was representing them on custody cases, mm. and they would call me because they didn't couldn't get a hold of him on the weekend i'm like the other spouse just showed up and took my kids and i need to get a hold of my lawyer right now get a hold of him for me guess what i said every time no no <laughs> i'm okay, not but, doing that i'm right. not broaching that true because danny gave me his cell phone number he didn't give you his cell phone number because he doesn't want you calling him at church right <laughs> so yeah so, that, so that's so my point influence. is right i get your that, point that's not, the point engaging, right like all of the politicians are doing that. All of them are doing that. And this is why I'm saying they're not going to prosecute Hunter Biden for ped peddling political influence, just like they're not going to prosecute the Trump sons for doing the same thing, because every politician is doing that very thing. This is the nature of politics. Everybody wants to talk to politicians because they know they have power and they will use any means necessary to get it. And that includes going through family, friends, siblings, etc. Where it crosses the line, and we have both a Democrat and a Republican, I think, right now that are both being prosecuted for this, is when they take direct payments for doing it, right? Mm -hmm. When they're like, hey, if you give me $500,000, I will push this bill through for you. Right. But if they're just the paying okay. to get into your orbit. Well, so here's the thing. If you look at the Clinton Foundation, okay, when Hillary Clinton was the, what was it? Crap. What Secretary was Secretary of State? Secretary of State. Thank you. Um, some Canadian uh, billionaires donated like 500 grand to the Clinton Foundation, which was a charity that didn't pay out anything in charity. <laughs> it just went straight to the Clintons, right? And like a week later, some big Canadian pipeline that they wanted got approved, right? Right. So I agree with your statement. Yeah, peddling of influence is what happens in Washington. But when it's that egregious that these people are – it's not a direct payment. It was a payment – the cutout was the Clinton Foundation, their charitable organization that paid like 2% or like two pennies on every dollar to charity, and the Clintons took the rest. This is a problem, and these people don't get prosecuted for it. And the Bidens have clearly done the same thing. And uh, Trump has done the same thing. I'm, I'm not seeing that kind of evidence where Trump has done the same thing. So He's if you show me the evidence. donations to his political campaign to pay for all of his lawsuits. Yeah. Well, and that's not that's not him passing laws that 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 the American taxpayers are paying for. To I mean, that's different. That's it's, him using his. 
his gravitas and his persona to ask people for donations. It's, Very different. It's not well. So, because uh, right, Josh, I disagree. I agree. I think it's totally the same. And like even even someone making a big donation and then not necessarily spelling out any tit for tat, but just getting something to me is problematic. Right. But it happens sure. all the time, every day. Right. And like if Ryan's and what I think he's saying is like, it's happening all over the place every day, all the time. And, and there's almost nothing we can do about it. I'm a hundred percent on board with Ryan's argument because that is, that's where I'm at. That's like, Oh yeah. It's happening everywhere and all over. And what I dislike is like one side framing it this way. And then, you know, and like, oh, look at this bad, bad guy. And then like, but we're going to like, but it's happening over here too. And we're just sort of ignoring it. Right. It's, sure. Just your partisan uh, uh -huh. your take on it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Partisan viewpoint. I couldn't agree more. That's why I keep saying lock them all up. Well, I, so, well, and and here's the thing, my my solution, competition. We need more competition, right? If if that Canadian pipeline's competitor would be like, what the heck just happened there, right? You know, no one's no better snitch than than uh that's I think that is the best way you're gonna get that in check in check than um then because right, because I think Ryan's things. saying what Ryan's saying is right, it's happening, it's rampant, it's everywhere, it happens all the time, it happens in benign, very indirect, vague ways, right? Just a campaign donation, and then you get some favor at some point, and then but there's very direct, spelled out tip for some of these are not benign because yeah. you could you could make the argument part of this reason that there's a war in Ukraine right now is because of this Biden 100%. stuff. Okay, that's not benign. People are dying. No, I know. I'm but saying there is benign. I don't cases. disagree with you at all. I really don't. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. So he it does he agrees right with around. Tom, but not me. Can't agree with me. Well, on principle, I don't agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> How would we have a podcast if <laughs> I agree with you? Does not play well with liberals. <laughs> the where I, so <laughs> here's the issue. So like and Ryan and I have gone over this a million times and I'm not going to belabor it because we don't have enough time. But like where I have the issue is, is, is I thought more about our argument last time. And I've made this argument so many times about like the media bias and things like that. And I think I finally put my finger on what it is. And it's it's culture. It's the culture that that the they basically the liberals have taken over the culture and. It used to be in the 1950s and 60s, the the and, and I'll probably all the way into the 80s, conservatives had the culture. It was McCarthyism, right? And and are you a are you a commie, right? And like go after you, and you were and and that's when liberals would cry foul, and they'd be like, "Hey, we have the right to free speech, and we should be able to say what we want, right?" And this was where liberal values this is where you became a liberal, and that's where you know hippies and and uh, all that you know this counter counterculture movement came from at some point we flipped right and now it's okay for um and and uh now you have you know the left is represented on the view during the daytime shows right it's on every night show right it's on the jimmy fallon the jimmy kimmel show they're all you know they're all doing a liberal culture and the and uh um conservatives have become the counterculture right we're mm -hmm. the and that's the issue I have is it was wrong back then to silence people over like anti-war protests and things like that. And, and to try to, and, but it's wrong now. And that's the, that's the issue I have because I actually agree with Ryan wholeheartedly. It's happening everywhere. But then when we spell it and we frame it in a certain way and we say, well, this is good, but that's bad. You're like, no, you are bull. It's all bad. And you're bull and you're hypocrites by, by pointing it one way and not the other. That's the problem. And I, the more you see this, you see this in society, you see it, the, the the Catholic church, right? And it's like, oh, you think the earth is round? Heretic, burn you, right? And it's like, you get this problem, you get this counterculture, and you're like, we don't want to hear about your counterculture. We, you put down those voices, and, but you, but for some reason, and you always prop up really bad ideas, right? Really bad ideas. And I think this has been happening forever. And I think it's bad right now. And we, we need to hear both sides out and we get this weird thing where it's like, oh, you think, you know, the, the, uh, COVID came from a lab. That's 
you know, then we can't hear that, right? It's only this narrative. It's this narrative and it's this narrative and anything else is bad. And I think that's the big problem I've been trying to put my finger on for years is like, or the, the, that I'm constantly upset about. I'm not upset about the, 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 this, that it's corrupt. It's corrupt everywhere and it's happening everywhere. And I, but it's, it's hypocritical when we wake one side virtuous and the other side, not that's where I get a problem. And, and I think it's this, it's count, it's culture counterculture is what it is, is that that's what I'm, having an issue with. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. I, I think I've brought it up before. What, what you're just saying right now reminded me of when I was studying British colonialism a couple of years ago. You know, and I think I've brought this up on the podcast. England's a pretty small island and it's not densely populated, but these people managed to conquer a huge swaths of the entire world and just siphon resources out of all these countries. Right. And how they did it was they would go in and they would identify two different groups and they would prop one up as like the state. And then they'd prop the other one up as the religion. And then they would pit them against each other. And then they would take all of the money and the oil and all the silk out the back door while, mm -hmm. while they had the two uh, sides Internal fighting. Conflict. And they did this, they did this everywhere. They're masters of it. That was how the British built their, empire and as you were speaking that's just absolutely what it reminds me of that's why we're locked in the two-party system that keeps us at each other's throats going no you you peddled influence no you peddle influence is that spider-man right. meme right right where all the while elon musk is just siphoning out all yeah. the money <laughs> but, but that's literally you bring the... it full circle that was yeah, a pretty we good did. full hey, circle high fives high <laughs> fives all around but that is the problem right we're over here fighting going no uh your guy that you voted for is the bad guy. My guy's slightly better. Well, we and, have and, and people so that believe if we kill all the Democrats or if we kill, like, like literally kill, like we're getting yeah. to that point, I right? Know. That, that will be a better place, right? It's just nonsense. Yeah, it's absolutely nonsense because the 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 people that are manipulating all this and taking all the money and and uh, creating all this wealth and power at the top are still going to be there, and they already have all the wealth and power. So yeah, I I like your your take there, and I don't I don't know that we really disagreed on much. To, like what what is the actual disagreement with with the Biden thing? Was there? I don't the, know. You just would agree with Tom, not me. I I kept saying <laughs> I agree with the idea. I was just asking, um, what what evidence? I I, I haven't seen the evidence for uh, the Trump kids. No, no, no. Your... I was never saying that there was evidence for that. I was just saying okay. that, that was only if, I didn't even if Hunter with. was doing it. It's not like the others weren't doing it too. And I I'm very much that disagree with your idea that Biden is more moral than Trump. And again, this is what Tom's talking about. All of a sudden, I'm defending this guy that I loathe because you keep defending the other guy that you right. don't but really I, care for. It, it, I just don't understand. I, think, I know, but think about how I defended him. I said. He's like 95% as bad as Trump, but like 5% better. And I can't agree with that because I've read of <laughs> all of the all of the women that he has sexually harassed and like yeah, the but not kids raped. that he's Come on, Trump actually no, there, was convicted there are of rape, allegations. Well, not convicted. He there was... are several allegations of him raping people. Of, yeah, of Biden. And, and Biden? Yeah. Oh boy. But okay. but right. And and it's like Were and then you're like well, Biden's laptop no, this is like Secret <laughs> Service people. Come on, I had, that. You know I, like I had to say that. You know, I had to say that. Was that was pretty like good. It. That was pretty good. That yeah. that's the only thing that I'm literally disagreeing. Like, I think they're both 100% sucky, and maybe yeah. Trump's only 99% sucky because uh, I much preferred life when he was in charge. Like, we didn't get any. Like, you you want to talk about the party switching? Um, the liberals are a lot of wars are happening when liberals are in charge. Trump didn't have any new wars. He was trying to scale things down. Like uh, maybe that needs to be another podcast topic of like you like his, his life policies. better. Yeah, his life better uh, under. Yeah, I don't think um, he's a good guy. Trump or Biden, but that's uh, but I thought a lot of his. I agreed with a lot of his policies. I thought he did better on on a lot of things. But well, that's they're both suck. He go right, and that's my big thing is. He goes counterculture, right? Trump is counterculture. And then yeah. therefore he's attacked. And I feel like he's unfairly attacked when it's sort of like he, when we get, look, if you look back on the presidencies, both Biden, they both 
made lots of mistakes and they both made did some things right right and it's like and, and i don't think they're like this is the worst president ever oh but he's doing everything right and you're like oh guys you so we put we frame it in such a way it's it's ridiculous that's what gets me upset anyway we look really uh, upset tom hmm? yeah i think we should wrap it up here <laughs> yeah we're going on hour two i think all right so. all right <laughs> We'll wrap it up. <laughs> All right. Uh, that was a good conversation. A fair amount of agreement, uh, particularly between Tom and I and Josh and Tom, but That's not necessarily Tom, between Ryan. Tom and complained Josh. about it last time, <laughs> so I brought it. I brought it. <laughs> All good. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back soon with another episode. Josh, we may not always agree when it comes to politics, even though we're trying, but there is one thing we agree on. There is only one way to clean up after going to the bathroom, and that's with a Lux Bidet. I've been a proud owner of a Lux Bidet for years. I have literally owned a Lux Neo 320 since 2013. That's the warm water model. Talk about happy, fun, poopy time. When I leave the bathroom, I know I'm clean and ready to talk politics in a civilized manner. Exactly. Using a toilet without a bidet is about as uncivilized as it gets. Civil conversations demand civil hygiene practices. And that is why our listeners should get themselves a Lux bidet. And just to be clear, Lux is not supporting one side or the other in this podcast. They support civil conversations and clean butts. Listeners can get their own Lux bidet with 10% off by ordering at luxbidet.com and using our promo code FCBG10, Finding Common Battlegrounds 10. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Finding Common Battlegrounds. The music is by Ben Sound. The views expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and not those of their employers. For more information or more episodes, you can find us at findingcommonbattlegrounds.com.